This is the PixInsight process tutorial for the ArcSign stretch. You find the ArcSign stretch in process, intensity transformation, and here it is. So it's another way to stretch your picture. What makes it special is that it actually is preserving the original color of the picture while other stretch techniques have the disadvantage of fading out the color to a certain extent. On the other side, the Arxen stretch has also the reputation of doing that a little bit too much, and so that colors get a little bit an unnatural look. And we will have now a look into it, how to use it, and compare it with some other stretch techniques to really see what happens to the colors compared to other techniques. As you can see, I have here four times the same picture. And if you use the screen transfer function, it's the Western Veil Nebula taken with the Optolong L with the purpose of having the stars. So from that point, it's really a good example as we want to have here the stars as colorful as possible. So for the first one here, I will use a simple histogram transformation. So we get the preview, stretching it once, we're stretching it twice and I think that looks about right. So this is what we can do with the histogram transformation that's one of the most popular ways how to stretch. So now let's come to the arc sin stretch and by the way what this is it's a stretch function which uses the inverse hyperbolic sine function. <laughs> so it's a special curve which actually helps here. We're using here protect highlights, we select that, that helps that the stars are not blown out over a value of 1.0. We're now opening the preview. We can now estimate a black point, and as you can see you have all these red dots which shouldn't be here, so we go down here with a black point until we have really a black picture, and that's now our real black point. So it's a little bit like the clipping of the left side of the histogram curve. And now we're actually using the stretch factor, moving it up slowly. So we can already also do here the whole thing in multiple steps. We say apply. Okay, and we reset the whole thing again. We can again start to stretch. Now the trick here is a little bit. If you try to stretch it already to a final point, and I think you can see it, it's really very, very intense the star colors, way too intense. So what you're doing is, you're not going that far. You just stretch it to about that. Okay, we're exiting here. And you already see now how very intense the colors are. So now what we're actually doing for the rest, we take as before the histogram transformation. So, Selected here now, arcs in. I have to get the preview, and now we can actually stretch this further until we like it. And that here looks about right. We're executing this exit. So I think it is quite obvious. The picture with the arcs in it, it pops more. The colors are, I mean, they're remarkable. If you look at this here, it's really blue. And here it's in principle white. And given that we did this last step now in the histogram transformation, it kind of brought the saturation down again to a level where it's healthy, where, where it doesn't burn your eyes. And I think that's a little bit the trick and also the reason why it got a bad rep. If you do everything with the arcs in, it's just, it's way overdone the color. But if you share it actually, the initial step with the arcs in and afterwards with the histogram transformation, it comes out about right. And if you feel this is still too saturated, nobody is stopping you for taking the color saturation process and just bring the saturation a little bit down until you feel it has a, a natural look. But I'm actually pretty happy with it, so I leave it as it is. Last but not least, just for the fun of it, let's try some very new stretch techniques and see how they compare. So for this here, I will take the linked RGB stretch from Bill Blanchon. So it's a pixel mass process. Throw it on here. And here we have it. And for the last one, 
I will take a generalized hyperbolic stretch pixel mass process also of from Bill Blanchard. So let's do that. Okay, and so let's now go through them one by one. If we compare here the two of Bill's methods, it, it's quite obvious that the generalized hyperbolic stretch does a better job than just the linked RGB, which is no more than a histogram transformation. So this actually, especially if you look at the nebula, pops a lot more, it looks sharper, it looks just just better. So I would say in this contest, the linked RGB is out. If we compare it to the histogram transformation, same result that the generalized hyperbolic stretch is better. So histogram definitely out. Now let's compare the arcs in with the generalized hyperbolic stretch. And I think if we look at the star colors, since that's what really the arcs in is, is good for, it is quite obvious that the stars are much more pronounced, much more colorful in the arcs in than it is in the generalized hyperbolic stretch. On the other side, if we look at the nebula, it looks much better in the hyperbolic stretch. It's like always, you can't have everything or you actually can. Because on one side, you might actually combine the arcs in with the hyperbolic stretch. So what I did now with the histogram uh, transformation afterwards, you could do that with a generalized hyperbolic stretch. That might actually give you both. And the other thing is you can actually rip the stars and the nebula apart and then actually treat the nebula with simply a generalized hyperbolic stretch and the stars you can treat with the arcs in so that you have the nice star colors. So from that point, I think it makes sense that we have more than one stretching options in PixInsight and each one, or at least some, have their strengths and others might be just relics from the past or simply because they're easy to use. If you're interested in the stretching tools of Bill Blanchon, I will put a link in the description below. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and press the subscribe button and see you with the next process. Clear skies.